Hello and welcome or welcome back to the Knitting Page channel. If you're new here, my name is Paige and I am the face behind the Knitting Page. So, last week I posted a video about my spring knitting plans. Today, I, based off last week, I guess, I got like super into looking through my stash, trying to decide what I want to make with what I have on hand because I really do want to use up a lot of my stash. I don't want to put a yarn band on, but I do want to have some concrete patterns that I would like to knit this year using the yarn that I already have in my stash. So today I have my Make Nine video for you, which is my year round knitting plans. These are nine projects that I would like to finish in the year of 2024. I have some garments, some accessories, um, a really fun project that I'll get to in a moment, but these are all projects that I am buying absolutely no yarn for. These are projects that I will make based off of what I already have in my stash. And because I had a bit of a slow start to knitting in 2024, and especially a really slow, a really slow start to posting here on YouTube, it is now April. Um, today is April 7th, so we are one week into April. And so I thought, make nine, why don't I try to do a make nine where I have one project that I would like to knit each month. And I am not gonna stick to knitting these each, like if I wanna cast on my October knit, sooner than October, I'll allow myself to do that. But because there's, it's a make nine, there's nine months left of the year, I figured that it was kind of cool to try to put these out on a monthly basis so that I have one project each month that I would like to knit to use up some stash. And then of course, allowing myself to cast on what inspires me for other projects um, during that time. And whether it's, again, when it comes to the monthly thing, whether it's a cast on during that month or a finish during that month, I can't predict the future and I'm not gonna set like super strict rules for myself for a passion that I do because it brings me joy and I like it. But I do have nine projects and I have them kind of corresponding to months. So let's go in order. The first project that I would like to knit is cardigan number nine. And so I talked about this in my spring knitting plans video. Um, but I really love this video, I really love this video. I really love this cardigan and I have this beautiful red yarn in my stash already. And so when my favorite things knitwear posted her cardigan number nine, I was like, that is what I'm gonna use this yarn for. This yarn has been sitting in my stash for a few years now and I'm very excited to get it out in this beautiful cardigan that I am really excited to knit. Um, it's funny, last week I didn't really, I just saw the, finished product and was like, I want to knit that and checked the yarn requirements, but didn't really look at the construction of the garment. And so this cardigan number nine is a saddle shoulder cardigan, which I've never done anything saddle shoulder before. And so I am excited to have that in my wardrobe. Um, I actually have cast it on, which you'll see in my next podcast video, which will come out next week. Um, but I am so excited to use this yarn. I'm absolutely loving the way that it's getting worked up. Excited to get it out of my stash. As mentioned last week, I paid $30 for the entirety of this cardigan's yarn. Um, it was $3 each for every ball of yarn, and I have 10 balls of yarn, five of the um, wool and five of the mohair. And so it should meet the requirements of the cardigan. I am going to finish like halfway through the body and then I'll knit the sleeves and then finish it off just in case I do yarn chicken. I'm always nervous about, always nervous. I'm always nervous about, I'm always nervous. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm always nervous about yarn chickening. Um, and so I do want to knit the sleeves first. I also sometimes get stuck on sleeve island. So once the sleeves get done and then I only have the body and the finishing button band to finish, I think it'll be really nice to finish that button band and then just have my cardigan ready to wear. I am prioritizing it for the month of April because spring is here. Today it is sunny. It's like 14 degrees Celsius. Um, the birds are chirping, like grass is turning green. There's some flowers popping up. So I want to get this off my needles as soon as I can so that I can actually wear it this spring, whether it be on colder days, in the mornings, at night. Um, but I want to get some wear out of this. And so I'm prioritizing it this April so that I still have some time to wear it before it gets really hot in the summer. But that is my first project pattern that I would like to make this year. Um, and it is cast on. So 
my whatchamacallit my cardigan number nine i should also mention that i do have other projects that i would like to knit this year but every project that i'm going to be showing you are projects that i will be casting on this year i have some languishing whips that i would like to finish this year as well but i wanted to make this video looking starting from scratch using up stuff in my stash so cardigan number nine the first make nine first make nine project okay the second pattern that I would really like to knit is the Sheltie by Wool & Beyond. I want to use this Bonule Lin. And this is from Drops. Um, it is a mix of 53% cotton and 47% linen. It says it's an Aran weight, but when I have swatched for it, I didn't, it, like it was quite a loose fabric. And so I swatched on five millimeter needles, which is what the pattern called for, but I will, I'm gonna try swatching on 4.5 millimeter needles and just go from there. Um, I have eight balls of this. It's what the pattern requires. I can always make it a little bit shorter if I need to, um, but I want it to have a bit of a tighter gauge. I don't want it to be airy. And I wanna be able to not see my garments, undergarments on underneath it, um, but I really, really love this pattern. I love like the tie style tops. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you might have saw that I was like, hey, who knows these ties style tops? I would love a short sleeve one that also has a peplum, but I do really love this top. I love that it could be work appropriate. It's beachy. It's super beautiful. It's fun. I love that I'm going to knit it in a nice off-white color. Um, I think it's going to be super wearable. I think I can get some like spring year-round use out of it, but Overall, really looking forward to this. I am obsessed with everything that Wool & Beyond does. I knit her Lonely Leftovers vest um, this past fall, and I wear that all the time. Um, I will be knitting one for my best friend uh, before I move, which there'll be an announcement at some point about where I'm moving to. Um, and I think this top will also come in useful for where I'm moving to. Uh, but Overall, I just think this will be a great pattern. It uses up again, like the entirety of this Bomulin that I have in my stash. Initially bought it to knit a pair of shorts, but I'm excited to knit this top instead with it. Um, you know, drops is super affordable. This top overall won't cost me a whole lot of money um, when it comes to hand-into projects. So I'm excited to use it. I'm excited again. Both of these projects, my final product is gonna look fairly similar to the product photos and like the pattern photos. Uh, I do like to differ from what the pattern photos do most of the time, but I am excited to have something similar and have this really beautiful neutral off-white top that I've knit that I can wear all the time. Um, and so the shell tee, this one is corresponding to my month of May knit. Uh, so I'll probably cast it on. I think it will be nice to get a summer top done before it gets really hot so that I have it to wear. I'm excited for it to be a t-shirt. I'm excited for it to be a nice neutral color. Um, and maybe, I know Knit City Toronto is coming up for the May long weekend or the Victoria Day long weekend here in Canada. Um, and so this could be a top that I could wear to it if I get it done before May 16th or whenever that first Knit City day is. And so that's also something on the back of my mind. I like that it's a summer top, but it's knit at a larger gauge which, with thicker yarn. Um, so it should fly off my needles compared to those beautiful fingering weight tees, um, which I would like to knit in the summer. I don't have any in my Make Nine list, um, but you'll probably be seeing them in the summer. So that is my second project for my Make Nine. The Shell Tea by Wool & Beyond using Bomulin uh, by Drops. Okay, I don't have yarn for this project that I'm going to be talking about, but my third Make Nine project that I would like to knit is the Emotional Support Chicken. Um, I'm forgetting who it's by off the top of my head, but my best friend who I'll be knitting the Lonely Leftovers vest for, I took her to our local yarn shop where I'm at in, uh, it's called Yarn It and they had a, an emotional support chicken and anyways the shop owner Kathy was like talking to Eliza and she was like look at this chicken like it's like trending on Ravelry it's so funny it's so cute oh and we also have one in the shop and Eliza my like best friend was like oh my gosh like this is hilarious I love one I love this like Paige do you think I could you could knit me one um and I was like 
yeah, I, that's actually so funny. Um, and like, she knows I have a whole bunch of scrap yarn. So she's like, can we go back to your house and like pick out yarn so that I can knit this, you can knit this chicken for me. And it's going to be my emotional support chicken. And so, sorry, a motorcycle just drove by. Um, but my plan is to knit her an emotional support chicken. And she picked out this beautiful purple color scheme. And then my plan is to also knit myself an emotional support chicken so that when I move and we're going to be living in different places, we'll each be able to have our chickens um, <laughs> for us to like know that we're always there for each other. Um, and anyways, we think it's super fun. We're like super excited to name them. So when I do knit it, there will definitely be polls about what I should name my chicken. Um, but it's just such a fun pattern. I have a whole bunch of like random single balls of yarn and different fun colors. I have scraps and so I'm excited to just like get really creative and really fun with this chicken and knit something really cute and kind of goofy. Um, the chicken is like a decent size uh, and so I think it'll be a really cute like almost like throw pillow to like have on my couch and like she'll probably keep hers on her couch. Um, and it, it was just kind of goofy and fun. Uh, it's a garter stitch pattern. It's like super simple, but it also has like some has short row shaping and like other fun techniques in like a really playful way of knitting a chicken. So um, I know there's like cable cast ons and other things like that in this chicken, which I haven't actually done before. So it'll be like kind of a, a skill extender while also knitting this chicken while using up scrap yarn and ha having this like super fun creative pattern and like project that I do like to have fun with my like garment knits, but like I might go like extra crazy with this and do some like pretty high fun contrast work for this chicken. So that is my June project. Um, the school year ends in June and so I thought it could be fun to have both our chickens done for the month of June um, when we'll be saying our goodbyes in terms of seeing each other every day. So that is my third project, my June project for my make nine. Okay, my July project that I have is this beautiful little shawl by Sari Nordland and it is the tiny shell shawl and so this is this is a shawl that's knit on fingering weight yarn it has a whole bunch of different techniques like there's lace and whatever sorry I'm blinking I don't have the project like in front of me I'm just going off memory but it's this beautiful shawl um and I purchased a whole bunch of yarn last year from Natural U, which is a like natural yarn dyer out of Nova Scotia. Um, and anyways, I thought I was purchasing soft yarn, but I was purchasing 100% non-superwash merino yarn um, that's organic. And I ended up purchasing these four different colorways. Um, they're all from the Boreal collection. And again, I've talked a bit about how important the Boreal is to me. Um, Anyways, I would like to, I have a few different ideas in terms of like, I'd love to knit like a little camisole in one of them. I would love to knit a, uh, one of this, anyways, I'd like to knit this tiny shawl in one of these colors. And I would also, this is the color, I love the porcelain sweater. And I thought that this could be really beautiful to hold as the contrast color in the porcelain sweater. Um, but I'm also not like 100% set on that. And so anyways, I would like to knit the tiny shell shawl in one of these beautiful yarn colorways from Natural U. So this color here is this beautiful butter yellow. Uh, it's in the colorway Tamarack Trail. Tamaracks are a coniferous tree, but they do leave their, leave their needles. They lose their needles just like a deciduous tree would, um, and like a maple tree or whatever, when it comes to the winter time to help save energy. Uh, and during that time, they go from a green to this really beautiful yellowy golden color when they're losing their needles. And so I know that like the buttery yellow color has been quite popular this spring. And so I, and yellow is actually my favorite color, but I have yet to knit any wearable things. I've knit the sand pillow by Ula Knitwear for a test knit in a beautiful yellow color, but I think it could be fun to knit a shawl in this yellow color or a little camisole. Um, so this is one that is an option. The other color way that I'm thinking about is this caribou colorway. 
And so again, it's this beautiful brown color with little hints of like magenta pink with little flecks of gold as well in it. I thought this could be a beautiful shell or beautiful shell, a beautiful shawl um, and something different from what I usually cater towards. I also apologize if you can hear Luna barking in the backyard. Uh, she's probably chasing squirrels. Anyways, I would like your opinion on what colorway you think I should knit. The other one I have is Red Fox, <laughs> which again is this coral colorway. I think it's really summery and fun and not necessarily a color I would reach for all the time, but I think it could be a really beautiful shawl and a really beautiful color to even like wear with like navy and things like that that I reach for. And the last colorway that I have is Wabakini. And Wapakini is this beautiful provincial park um, north of Thunder Bay. It's like three hours north of Thunder Bay. It's like at the end of a highway. It's, you have to like canoe camp um, and like portage in. And anyways, I love water. I love blue. I love the boreal. So this is another beautiful color. Again, that would make a beautiful shawl. Um, or I could use it in like the porcelain sweater or something else. Uh, but yeah. The Tiny Shell Shawl by Sari Nordland is what I would like to knit in July. I think a little shawl. Um, I know Amy from Nina's has talked about her little shawls that she's knit and how much wear she gets out of them. I have never knit a shawl before, but I would like to knit them. I think they can be a great temperature regulator. I think they can turn a overall like outfit that you wouldn't necessarily wear knitwear with to bring a piece of knitwear into it. Um, I think they're great for the winter to keep warm. And I think doing a fingering weight 100% wool project in the summer that's again lacy and fun would can give me a break from knitting only summer fibers and get some of that give that you get with merino while not having it be a cumbersome project. So the tiny shell shawl is my fourth make nine project and that is for the month of July. Okay for the month of August you have seen this project plenty of times if you are a knitting page OGer, and this is the Tide Loop Tea by Other Loops. I love this pattern. I think it is absolutely gorgeous, but I have not found the time to cast it on or prioritized casting it on. But I bought this yarn immediately as soon as that Issachar Breeze collection came out. I bought Alpaca 1 in the colorway 11 to hold with Issachar Trio 2 in the colorway Frost. And Issachar Trigo 2 is a linen, cotton, and lyocell blend. Again, I think this icy blue combination is a color that I wear all the time. I love wearing blues and I think the shell tea is so beautiful. Um, and in the summer, I do plan on being outside, enjoying time, space, energy by the water. Um, and so I think this could be a great tea to knit for August. Again, that nice mix of an animal fiber and a plant fiber, summer fiber, I think could give a really nice project for the hands. I've been enjoying working on my uh, Nada dress, which again is a plant fiber and a merino linen blend. So this I think could be a great August project, very summery, but I think it could give me some good wear into the fall um, being a knit t-shirt with a bit of alpaca which is typically a warmer fiber it's a warmer fiber there we go words are hard today apparently so that's my august plan that is my fifth make nine okay the september make nine my sixth make nine project that i would like to cast on is vest number eight by my favorite things knitwear, I believe. It's either eight or nine, but it's the cable vest. And so I bought this yarn on a trip to Amherst Island when I visited uh, Topsy Farms, which is a local wool producer close to Kingston. Um, everything is like milled, dyed, processed within a hundred kilometers of Amherst Island. They use a couple different sheep farms two of them are on amherst island one of them's on mainland ontario and anyways i bought this i thought it was going to work to make to hold with this thrifted wool that i have to knit like a louvre sweater or something 
very simple in this dark gray, but this wound up being a lot more of a dark brown than a dark gray. And I, I didn't even bother swatching. I was like, that's not what I want. I want like a pure like graphite gray sweater. With a, ooh, I want a pure graphite gray sweater that I can wear with anything. And so anyways, got this yarn and I got the colorway Dark Moose in Knitting for Olive Mohair which is this super dark brown color, and I think they work really well together. I only have 800 meters of the fingering weight, which I can squeeze a sweater out of, but it would have to be like cropped and like a looser gauge. And anyways, I was struggling to find a pattern that I wanted to knit because I tend to like my sweaters oversized. At one point, I was thinking of knitting a blouse number one with this combo because I do really love that fit. Um, but after knitting my blouse number one with the Germantown and the mohair, I actually wore that the other day and I was surprised how much I loved it because I haven't worn that sweater a lot. Like I've worn it twice now. Um, but anyways, I decided I've been really into vests. Like I have some dressy vests that I wear all the time to work. I wear them in my casual life and I don't have a knitted button up vest. And I was like, that could honestly be a great way to use this kind of like odd number of, like it's too small to make a proper size sweater for my size, but it's also like too much to just knit a hat with because I still wind up with leftovers. And I was like, a vest, oh my gosh, how have I not thought of a vest yet? And in this dark brown color, I figured that it could be a great piece for fall. Um, I think the cables will, you'll still be able to see them, but it's not going to be like a full statement. I've been really enjoying brown to wear. Anyways, I was like, I'm going to knit a vest and I do really love the cabled look of vest number eight by My Favorite Things Knitwear. Apparently this is a very My Favorite Things Knitwear heavy year. Um, and I know, again, there is some tea and issues with some of her earlier designs, but she has been making an effort recently to be way more size inclusive. Um, and if I find an alternative, I can always switch it up and support a, a smaller designer. But right now, these are like the easiest projects that I have in my favorites on Ravelry that I want to knit. So this is my sixth project, Vest number eight by My Favorite Things Knitwear. Um, I think it'll be a great, like, even if I start it at the end of summer, a nice way to transition into fall, winter knitting, getting, again, that nice animal fibers on my fingers. I know last year in August, I was just craving to work with wool and mohair, um, and I wound up knitting my April cardigan. And so I think this vest will be a great way to kind of allow myself, not a, I can do whatever I want when it comes to knitting, but like give myself the, the plan to knit this and have it be, wearable for that summer to fall transition. Um, a sleeveless top I love in the summer. Bull and mohair is going to be warm, but again, I think it will be, it'll be a great transition piece. And so that is my September plan is to knit this beautiful vest. Okay, we are getting closer to the end. The seventh Make Nine project that I would like to knit. <laughs> you saw it in my spring knitting plans video. But realistically, I don't think I will be able to knit it this spring. And so I'm moving my Norma sweater plans to October. Um, and right now for the Norma sweater, what I'm thinking about is knitting the main color as this navy with orange and this like tealy gray blue as the contrast colors. I talked about it in my spring plans video. Who knows, I could still get carried away and cast it on this spring, but I do, I purchased the normal sweater pattern. I have yarn to knit it. And so I do want to knit it this year at some point. Um, when I was working through the months, it just kind of worked out nicely that it would wind up in the fall because I have a decent number of summer projects planned and to any with yarn to use up for this year. Um, that it, it wound up fitting in the fall. I chose October, um, which I think it could be a fun fall knit, getting some orange, getting some navy. So yeah, sorry, a text message came in, so I was reading it, but the normal sweater, I would like to knit at some point, whether it's in October, I could also see myself kind of put aside, but knitting multiple normal sweaters because 
I think that it's such a fun pattern and I love stripes. Um, and I think it's a great way to use up some like odd quantities of worsted weight that I, again, I have this and it's like enough for some smaller, less ease sweaters. Um, I have four balls of it, again, 800 meters. But ideally I like to have like 1200 because then I know I can knit any sweater at a worsted weight. Um, anything less, it's like maybe I'm playing yarn chicken or I have to modify the pattern for it to, to get it to fit. Um, and then I, again, I have leftovers from my blouse number one. And then I purchased some uh, Cascades 220 to knit the loom sweater. And I just bought a few extra colorways because it was on super sale um, that I wanted to knit. Okay, for the month of November, I, I've had this yarn in my stash for a while. And I have known what I've wanted to do with it from the get-go, but I just haven't cast it on. And I would like to knit the Lane Loop Tee by Other Loops. I have... I first bought this yarn, which is their Marsh Mohair in the colorway linen. And again, it is this beautiful, nice, beigey color that I think, I don't go for a lot of beiges. I find that sometimes it washes me out, but I do find myself reaching to wear beige more often, like relatively often. Um, and I think that knitting a mohair in wool t-shirt could be a great way in the school sometimes a full sweater is a lot but a t-shirt with like a shirt on over top or a blazer i think could be a nice way to wear knitwear um and I, again i only have the yarn quantity to knit a t-shirt with this yarn so i think the lane loop top is beautiful uh have actually now that i'm thinking about it i haven't actually knit a raglan sweater that's a lie. I have knit a raglan sweater for myself, but I never wear it. Um, and I've knit some for friends. But yeah, I feel like I don't, like looking at my uh, my finished garments, I don't have a lot of raglan sweaters. I've knit a few raglan cardigans, uh, but I don't have a raglan sweater. And so I think a raglan t-shirt, I like the little details of the raglan. I've had it in my stash. I know what I want to do with it. I think a mohair t-shirt like sweater that's like really oversized is going to be perfect for me in my styling choices. Again, I feel like my style is all over the place. Um, I love dressing really feminine. I love dressing really masculine. Uh, and I think this will be this oversized shirt and sweater with it. Sometimes I can get a bit sensitive to well, and mohair if it's too tight, but I think because there's so much positive ease in this garment that it will be a great way to use up these yarns in it, a really beautiful garment. I'm excited to let this mohair shine because there is some, it's a kind of a tonal, like there's some differences in the beiges throughout, but it's so beautiful. And this mohair is ridiculously soft. And then I got Bio Shetland by BC Garn. And I ordered this on a, like one of the sales from a yarn store because uh, I thought that it, they could work well together and I just haven't prioritized casting it on. But I think November or sometimes in, sometime in that fall time, it could be a great way to use this yarn and create this piece that I've wanted for like a year or two now. That was project eight. The last project that I would like to knit is the sweater number 14 V-neck version by My Favorite Things Knitwear. I love this sweater. I know that there are only three sizes and I am not sure whether I'll knit size one or size two and I wish there were more sizes, but there's not. And I love the look of this sweater and I know there are some other V-neck sweaters, but none of them speak to me the same way that this sweater speaks to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and knit it. It is on my plans. Um, I've also had this yarn in my stash for a few years now, a couple of years maybe. I lose track of time, um, but this is Drops Flora. And this is Drops Alpaca Silk. And I ordered both of these during the Drops Alpaca sale, probably two years ago, maybe three years ago, come this fall. And I knew I wanted to knit a sweater or a cardigan, didn't know what, kind of hemmed and hawed. Again, a nice basic gray color, I feel like will be super versatile and wearable. And I think this V-neck sweater will be a great way to use up this yarn in a sweater that I will wear and love. And I, I've, 
I love this sweater when I first got into like the knitting Instagram world and I still love it. So I know it's one that I want to knit. I have it in December. Again, it was just kind of where it fell. I was like an alpaca and basically all alpaca sweater is going to be really warm. Why not knit it in December? Um, if it gets cast on before then, so be it. But it is my ninth project for my Make 9. So those are all of the projects that I would like to knit this year when I'm looking at my stash and I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to pare down some of my stash. I would like to get it. I have a lot of yarn and I'd like to get it to more of a manageable amount. I'm still going to prioritize knitting for my stash this year, but overall, uh, these are projects that I've either had in my, the back of my head for a while or I've bought with a specific intention and purpose. And I want to make a goal this year and an intention to knit these projects and get them out of my stash and not just hold on to them because there's beautiful yarn. What if I actually, you know, sometimes we buy this really nice yarn and then it just sits there for forever and we never get to knit to it or never get to it to knit with. And so this year, want to make all these projects. I liked the idea of starting in April, not purposefully, but it kind of worked out that there's nine months left of the year and the Make Nine has nine projects. Try to mix up some garments and some accessories so that I don't only have to knit like a full garment each month if life gets busy. Um, different gauges, different fibers. Overall, I think it's going to be a really nice, like, yeah, it's going to be a really nice year. So stay tuned for these projects to come to life. I really hope I can keep my word and knit them all. But until then, until you see these come to life in December, I will see you next week with my first knitting podcast in a while where I show you what I'm working on, show you some finished projects, and I apologize for the barking. Until next time, peace out. Bye.